Hello everybody, Road Warrior 627 back here with another preview for a couple of big races here at Belmont Park this Thursday. It is the first day of the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival, which will be from the 8th to the 10th. Of course, culminating in the 149th Belmont Stakes, the 11th race on Saturday, which is an absolute crapshoot, by the way, as the favorite is Irish Warcry. He has not won since the Wood Memorial. He ran very poorly in the Kentucky Derby. Maybe with some excuses, but that just shows you how wide open it is. But anyway, uh, I'll be doing two more videos over the next couple of days. I'll be doing a video on Friday and a video that will be out on Friday for Saturday. Uh, the video for Friday will be out tomorrow, and the video for Saturday will be out possibly tomorrow as well or, in worst case, Friday. So let's get started with tomorrow at Belmont, the first day of the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival. Uh, first post is 2 o'clock. It's a very nice card, very good betting card. There's a lot of guarantees. I believe there's a $75,000 guaranteed pick six, so you might want to get involved in that. We're going to take a look at the three uh, stakes races here today. So uh, race number three is the Wonder Again Stakes. It's grade three, post times 303. Looks like there's 31 minutes in between each race. We'll go through these rather quickly. I'm going to take the Ortiz, the younger Ortiz brother, with Chad Brown with 55. She's three for six lifetime. She's going to have, probably have to improve to win this race unless the others don't show up. Behind her, I am going to put Rudy's horse, the six. Feels she will probably adapt and become uh, close to the pace in this race. Uh, Chad's favorite behind her. And then Chad's other horse behind that. So Chad Brown has three horses in the race. I feel as though all three will finish in the top four. Mark Cassie's horse toward the inside is likely to get good position. However, I don't like exactly what she's been doing lately. So I'm going to leave her out of it. So let's move on to the fifth race on the day, which is the Astoria. It's only under $50,000. Very short race, five and a half furlongs. Uh, I am going to easily take in this race the number seven best performance. One for one lifetime. Christoph Clement can train any kind of horse for everybody who says he's just a turf trainer. Now, second, I am going to put the number three Sugar Queen for Todd Pletcher. Also is one for one in her very short career. This is both only their second starts. More value with Clement's horse. That's why I simply did that. I think Jeremiah Englehart's horse has a chance with Javier. Just to the inside of Sugar Queen, I still miss you. What a funny name that is. And number uh, eight, I have wrapping up the Superfecta, Di Maria. On the outside for Jimmy Ryerson and Luis Saez, hoping that they can take a step up in here at a price to round out the Super. So that's the Astoria. Last one we're going to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen, is race number eight, the Intercontinental. Always popping up over the years is a very, very good betting race. And this year is certainly no exception. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to choose the number four. Fair point. Going to go with my man, Shug McGahey. That's right. I took Jose Ortiz to win all three stakes on this card. Just the way it worked out, I wasn't even looking at the jockeys that much. Uh, McGahee's horse has done very well. He's hit the board 12 out of 15 times. Five wins, seven seconds throughout the career. So I do expect her to run well. Uh, even if she doesn't win, she'd still be in there. Uh, I'm going to take the favorite second, and I really don't like to do that a lot. But uh, three for three, take these chains. Certainly hasn't been that developed, but gets the job done nevertheless. Also, uh, doesn't have to carry as much weight as the other ones. And it's only a couple of pounds. Uh, some other ones also don't have uh, to carry as much weight either. But I thought it was just a point maybe worth bringing up. Now, 5-2 to two on the morning line. I think because of the 3-for-3, three three, she's going to dip down a little bit from that. So as far as the value goes, it's not probably going to be good. I think she's probably going to land 2-1, to 9-5, to five, something like that. So if you just want to bet the horse alone, I suggest not doing that. 
because you're really not going to make anything off of that. And there are some other good horses in here, including the number eight Port Magie for Christophe Clement and the other Ortiz brother, I read. Going to uh, pick him at eight to one on the morning line. I'm going to round out the super with Chad's other horse. Usually I like to pick the longer one on top, but this time I stuck the longer shot underneath in the fourth spot, Conquest Baba Yaga. Larry Comus, have fun saying that. So that'll do it, guys. I ran through this card rather quickly because, to be honest, I am struggling right now looking at Saturday because Saturday, almost every single race except for the Ogden Phipps, does not have a legitimately big favorite. Songbird is really the only big favorite on the whole card who really has something going for her. The Belmont, as I said, is a crapshoot. The Met Mile is a fantastic race, as it always is. But this year, with it so wide open, the easy goer early on in the card, the second race, also looks very good. But I digress. We're going to look at that later. I still have another video coming out for Friday's races. That'll come out tomorrow, which is Thursday. I'm recording this, and it will be up as you're watching this right now on Wednesday night. Hope you all enjoy tomorrow's opening Belmont Stakes Racing Festival card at Belmont. Once again, first post, 2 o'clock. And remember, everybody, pay your bills